So I received an email from SETI Tronics that the PLC 68 and 44 adapters um, were out of stock. And I decided to have, for the price, um, order some of these PLCC44 and 68 sockets. Um, as I mentioned before, I had noted um, some of the blog entries um, that the SMD ones I ordered are as easy to solder. So I also, um, I forget what it is, ND Fly or I think you have to look. I'll put it down in the link. Um, these 40 pin mail to mail connectors also ordered some of those, and those came within a few days. I already had the board, and uh, so I decided to super glue to make soldering a little easier uh, when these were sitting in the breadboard um, to get that width spacing angle correct. Cause there's somewhat of a little angle. So the next thing I had to figure out was which pin is associated with which pin. I'm sure there's a data sheet, a diagram. Well, I just figured I'd use a conductivity tester and then draw out um, those pinouts in relation to uh, the pins in the socket. Um, the solder side and the pin on the socket side where the uh, chip presses in. So I kind of fiddle around and realize I need to have the trace go out a little further and then go over. Or I didn't do that over here and didn't do that over here. And now I see, duh, I need to come out a little further then cut over. Um, and then also, when I was inserting the wires through the holes, uh, some of the holes are a little small for some of the wire, and uh, super glue also filled in a couple of the holes. So I happened to have a little twist drill, or Dad had a twist drill downstairs. Uh, it was a little bit larger in diameter than the holes, and I forgot to look to see what size I probably could measure. Um, though I wasn't getting a good grip with my hand, I didn't really have a chuck small enough for it. Um, they could control as easy, so I took some double-sided tape, rolled that around, looks like maybe one, two, three turns, and then so I wasn't touching, I put a little uh, self-adhesive, self-bonding silicone tape on the outside to get a little better grip, and that worked pretty good. I figured I'd document that, and then when I'm at it, I'll explain some of this also. Um, but making progress, next thing up, I think the holes are opened up enough. Now I've got an idea generally how I'm going to lay out the wires. Um, I'm going to go ahead and run all the wires through. I was thinking maybe I could alternate one wire could be open. Um, I wouldn't necessarily have to have, I could take the insulation off the wire to fit the little larger diameter wire through the holes, but I did wind up finding um, some uh, smaller diameter wire so I didn't measure the gauge. I have this cool little ruler I picked up so I can measure the gauge of wire easier. It has neat little uh, indicators for the different types of components that I don't think I'm going to be working with anytime soon. Those are pretty small. I don't see myself soldering those quite yet. I guess the SMD, there's a few, few components I can. There was an HC, was a 9 or now they call it, oh, 49, HC49 for the crystals. So there might be a few, um, this is like style, other style two, might be a few chips on here that I'd use. But some of these are uh, low, way small for my skill set right now, at least scattering skills. It looks like it's a reflow oven type operation where you need to uh, use a, uh, absorbent uh, solder remover strip or something to clean the solder out of the gaps. Cause, man, that is like, that is small. I can't even zoom. Anyhow, moving forward, time to solder, set some wire and trim it and solder so I can get uh, 
those uh, PLCC44 and PLCC68 chips um, circuits prototyped and working start debugging the TDS series scopes and the um, Radio Shack Pro 2006 um, scanner with the CE232 interface. <laughs>